Hey guys, in this video is a combination of about six months of me struggling to get my telescope to actually perform the way that I wanted it to. So if you're having any issues with your F3.9 8 inch Newtonian, this might be the video for you. Okay guys, so the first thing that I want to bring up is a picture that I took in 2018 before I did everything to my Newtonian to fix this. And if you look here, you can see all the stars just have these random diffraction spikes. And I fought with this for a very long time. I thought my collimation was off, which it was off, but it would not have solved these stars. And I have seen quite a few of other people's pictures on Astro Bin using these fast Newtonians, all 8 inch. I haven't seen this issue on the 10 inch from Orion, but I have seen them. A guy, Ethan, that I met at the Public Star Watch this past uh, weekend, he didn't realize that he had these diffraction spikes that were just kind of off and odd until I showed him some of my old pictures and explained it to him. So, this is an older picture and you can see this main diffraction spike right here is actually caused by the focus focuser tube actually intruding into the main OTA or when it comes to focus. And the other the other spikes that are on here, I'm going to show you how to get rid of those as well. So now we're on to a more recent picture after everything that I've done and you can see the stars look a lot better and let's look at how I did this alright so here's my Newtonian it's the Explore Scientific it's the carbon fiber edition and the first thing that I did to it was uh, replace the focuser now the focuser is not something you need to replace but I always had the intention to get a motorized focuser it's something that I always wanted it just happened to help me in that it doesn't protrude the uh, the OTA. So the main diffraction spike was from the original focuser. Now if we take a look at the original focuser, when that thing's not even all the way racked in, that thing is sticking out a lot. So with my camera combina combination and coma corrector, the focus just happened to have this protruding about a half of an inch into the OTA, which caused a massive diffraction spike on my star. But let's take a look at this a little bit more, how you actually can get rid of this with the stock focuser without replacing it. Alright, so here's the stock focuser that came on my telescope. The problem is, is that this part right here is too long, but that comes off. And you need to take this thing all the way off. Now this is a disclaimer. I never did this. I only just replaced the entire focuser. But it looks like Explore Scientific sells a shorter version of this. Because if you're using the coma corrector and you just take this all the way off, I'm not 100% sure you would still be able to get focus. But they do make a 1 inch version and they sell it on High Point Scientific's website. Cause this is the two inch and let me spin you around over here and look at my screen so this right here it's $22.99 and it says it's for rack and pinion focusers but it, it looks exactly the same I think they just did that as a general thing but you would need that and that should actually pull this in closer to where this tube won't intrude because from what I remember it was only it was under a half of an inch that was causing it and if you take a whole inch out of it that'll you'll be able to get focus with the coma corrector and it'll get rid of that diffraction spike but that doesn't take care of the small ones that's the biggest issue that I see on almost all of these so let me show you that all right, so this is kind of hard to get on camera, but we're looking down inside the OTA at the mirror. And what causes those little tiny spikes is actually the mirror clips that hold the mirror in. And I don't understand why uh, the mirror clips cause so many issues with these particular telescopes. 
Um, I have a lot of different Newtonian telescopes and none of them have these issues except for this one. But if you look at mine, you can't see the mirror clips at all. It's because I 3D printed an aperture reducer and painted it flat black. I'm going to have the files of this uh, linked in the description that you guys can download them yourself and print them. Or if you need help printing them, just send me a message or something like that and I might be able to hook you up. So let's take a little bit closer look at what this aperture reducer is. Alright, so we're at my workbench now and I have the primary mirror out of the telescope. And here's another piece of one that I just printed. And how I made it was I just sanded these edges right here and I glued it together with 5 minute epoxy that you can get at any store, Walmart. And I put it on a piece of wax paper and I glued the edges and you can pull it right off the wax paper and then I sanded it all down. And how I, I painted it with stove paint, which uses a real black pigment. It's just like your regular cooker paint that you would have for your grill. And I mounted it with some 3M Extreme Duty double-sided tape. It's got three layers just to raise it up off of the screws. And what's nice about this, this won't void your warranty. What will void your warranty is another way to do this. And that is to remove these mirror clips and glue the mirror to the back of this. Now the back of this looks like that. They don't have any holes or anything like that and I don't trust that. I transport this thing everywhere and I've never had a problem with this thing coming off. But this is the number one thing that'll fix your your stars and your contrast in your images. So I'll have the files for this down in the uh, down in the description. I'll put them on a Google Drive and they're free for you guys just to take them and modify them and do whatever you need to do to fix your Newtonian. Now collimation is a whole nother thing because the picture that you get through your collimation devices is not going to look the same as 99% of the tutorials out there on how to collimate your telescope. It looks a little different and I was constantly trying to get this picture that they had on the internet and it's not possible on these telescopes. So I'm gonna post up a picture now of what the collimation picture should look like through your eyepiece and I'm gonna show you a video um, here in a second of me looking through the eyepiece. Here we're looking down my focuser tube as well as I can hold the camera steady and in line with the focuser tube. Um, as you can see um, the secondary has a very the distinct offset to it. And this is actually what you want in a fast Newtonian. Um, I searched around for quite a while before I found this out, and I was always wondering why can I never get this thing into collimation. Well, I was doing it wrong. It's supposed to look like this. Um, and I believe anything faster than like f4.5, uh, the secondary starts to look oblonged, but you want to get that focuser uh, picture dead center. And the biggest issue that I had with this telescope was I couldn't get the secondary high enough. And what I had to do was flip, let me see if I can get you guys up here. I had to flip this little plate that was right in here that actually held on to the secondary. And I don't know why. I guess it was on backwards from the factory and nobody ca caught it. But I played with this forever. And then one day I flipped this thing around and I think it took me 30 minutes to get this thing in. So if you are having trouble with the secondary not being high enough so that it's a circle in your picture, try looking at this secondary there could it could be put together wrong could just be a fluke but that was my one of my biggest issues with the collimation so i hope this video is helpful to you and may save you six months of hassle like i went through 
And I want to say I don't think it's necessarily the manufacturer's uh, problem. I think that it's certain camera and coma corrector combinations because I see a lot of images out there and they sold a lot of these telescopes. I think this just happens to some people and this is what you have to do. Um, I'm very happy with the telescope after these modifications and I wouldn't trade it for any other telescope. So you could take that for what it is. But all the, the links will be down in the description of the materials that I used as well as the STL files for you to download and make your own aperture reducer. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, there's a lot of websites that you can upload your own files and they'll print them and ship them to you. And with that, I'll see you on the next one. Clear skies.